All right, let's see. Okay, you just uh, no, Mazer Griner, you bet. Okay, yeah, you keep walking, bud. I'm available to help Come you on, I gotta get this bomb. My oh, <gasps> ooh, son, what you got? Nothing, cause I got the ball in my head. I'm doing the ball head dance, yeah, boy. Hey everybody, Arch Taco here, welcome you back to Destiny. In the previous episode we had a very good old time, uh, recapping the story, talking about character classes, being a goob and dying from really stupid reasons. So with that, uh, uh, real quick, I do want to say I uh, did some off-screen training and I'm now officially at level 8, so I'm going to be using these firebolt grenades. Uh, they're really handy, so you'll definitely be seeing them in action during the strike. Um, but I also unlocked the focus control perk for our double jump. It lets me uh, better control myself when I use it, so it definitely makes a huge difference. I love using it. So, oh yeah, um, in addition... Uh, while I was doing the patrols, I completed a couple bounties, so that's pretty awesome. We're going to get some reputation and experience, and all in all, it's going to be a good old time. So, what do you guys say we turn them in? Now, okay, here's something I just want to say. Whenever I have a bunch of bounties like these, um, preferably like three or more, I definitely like to mash the X button. So, what do you guys say? Ooh, that feels so good. Ooh, that feels good. And we can grab two more. Okay, 9,000 experience. Okay, we don't have a fusion rifle, but I will gladly take it. Next Thank you, sir. Complete. Alrighty, well, uh, so, so far we have killed three more enemies with single super use. Can't use that as a sunsinger, but hey, have it in my, tor in my inventory, because why not? Uh, then we have complete any strike without dying. Piece of cake, definitely not going to die. I actually said that. I actually said that. Nope. Nope, that's it. I'm done. Series over. Uh, earn 9,000 experience without dying again? Who's gonna die in the strike? <laughs> Funny! <laughs> I'm crying. On the inside. Also outside. And kill two enemies at once with fusion rifle uh, 20 times. If we're lucky, hey, I might get fusion rifle. If not, eh, it's not the end of the world. I might just cry for like 20 minutes and not 30. You know? No? Okay, let's just go to orbit. Alrighty, and we're here. So we do have this one moon story mission to go, but we do have some unfinished business on Earth. So over yonder, we have the Devil's Lair Strike. Bada boom, bada bing. I am so, oh, I'm so excited. One of my favorite missions on Earth. For several reasons, including the mission itself. All right, so biggest thing, you might notice I am joined by other people. Oh, one sec. It's not a recording without me. Burpin. 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 The Fallen will continue to claw at the walls of our city unless we strike them down. Beneath the ruins of the Cosmodrome, in the shadow of an old colony ship, we've located the House of Devil's Lair and the High Civitor, feeding them their strength. We must destroy this machine god and send their souls screaming back to hell. Back to hell. So yeah, strikes are really interesting because they are, um, they are like really focused on uh, playing with other people, which is definitely a big change to what we've done so far. So yeah, as you can see here, I'm joined by Mr. Uh, what's her names? Uh, Real Jinx, okay, and Chronic487. Welcome to the team, guys. If by any chance you see these videos, or and by videos, of course, I mean video. Uh, hi. <laughs> Hopefully I don't screw things up. Too bad. So yeah, okay, uh, right now we are actually in this area called the Rocky Yard. And what's really neat is it's another area where the uh, Hive and the Fallen are perpetually at war with one another. Now, normally when you spawn in, uh, when you're playing with uh, with most people, they'll actually like rush through and just go straight to the next area. Not sure what these guys are doing, they're just kind of hanging out, killing some people. So I'm assuming this might be their first time through, or they might have like a bounty where they have to kill people. But yeah, normally most most people don't just uh, hang out over here. But you know, I'll, I won't go too far ahead in case they're new and uh, need some need some guidance. <laughs> Although, who am I kidding? I'm probably the one that needs the most guidance. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But yeah, strikes are really neat because um, you're automatically matched up with two other people, and um, 
the fights themselves definitely require a lot of teamwork. It's just it's a it's a really cool thing. Uh, strikes in general are just much longer and more involved than your typical story missions. Fallen Empire. Let's hope we can avoid the crossfire. Uh, by let's hope the crossfire, you mean uh, dive straight on in? Uh, okay, I can definitely do that. So, um, I also want to say the hand cannon I'm using. Um, uh, see, okay. I'm really used to playing as my other two characters, which are both at level 28, uh, meaning that I have like some pretty awesome equipment, right? Some pretty like high, high tier equipment. Um, so going from that back to my like beginning of the game stuff, kind of jarring because this hand cannon is definitely very under level compared to where I probably should be um, in the game right now. I think it's like a level three or a level four hand cannon, and again, this is a level eight strike, so. Uh, that might come to bite me. Hopefully not, though. Alright, so, up here, uh, in general, during the strike, snipers are going to be your worst enemy. You're going to be fighting Hive, Wizards, and Knights, and Fallen Captains. Pretty much everything that the game has to throw, it'll throw lots of it at you. But with all that said, the hardest enemies, I, I feel personally, are definitely the snipers. So, definitely uh, with every wave of enemies, and yes, there are going to be multiple waves of enemies at this like part of the game, uh, it's definitely in your best interest to take out those snipers ASAP. So, uh, with that, we took care of the snipers, I usually go for that uh, knight, not knight, for that uh, wizard, then I take care of the knights, and then finally the captain, and then any leftover drones. So, uh, I will be playing all the strikes in the game. And basically, when I do it, um, I probably won't Great. show the way out of here. Is sealed. Let's go ahead and give our uh, good old, good old Dinkleberg, Dinkleberg. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go over strategies for these, uh, for these strikes because there are these things called nightfalls and weekly heroics that, um, a lot of times dedicate, um. Or not dedicated, but a lot of times it's actually hard to find other people to play with because the game doesn't automatically match you up. Oh, good. I already died. Okay, well, that leads to a uh, uh, that new mechanic I'm talking about uh, near the beginning of the project. If you die while playing with other people, um, they can revive you, which does make you playing with other people much, much easier than playing by yourself. But anyway, as I was saying, um, for these, for these Nightfall and Weekly Heroic Strikes, um, I'm going to be showing different strategies you can use to solo these, to play them by yourself. So, um, that like greenish, like glowy bunker area that I was in over uh, by the left, that is uh, definitely the best area to stand in during this section of the game, because none of the enemies will really shoot at you. Um, some of the snipers will, I think, but I think they're like the only ones. None of the melee enemies will come over to you at that spot. So you can just safely sit over there and snap them from distance and not have to worry your little old head about uh, getting snuck up on. So, really great spot, but the thing is, it gets really monotonous and really boring to play like that. So instead, I'm going to play how I think it was intended for me to play, which is just regularly. Also, oh no, Chronic! No! Also, you know what I just realized? Wow, I am so awesome. I already screwed up my chances for that one bounty. God dang it. <laughs> These fallen are getting smarter. It's like the entire system is wired to it. I'll work faster. Oh, god dang it. Deagleberg, did you just set off an alarm? Uh, the answer is yes, he did. <laughs> and because of that, he ended up actually calling in like more reinforcements. God! Deagleberg. <laughs> what a guy. Am I right, guys? Uh, the answer is yes. Yes. Okay, so, um, Mr. Sniper Blind Guy, that's above me. Could you? Oh god, oh god! Vandals, get out of my life. Come on, man. Okay, yep, I, I hear you, Sniper Guy. I'm coming for you. I'm getting that booty. Come on. Oh, yeah, there he is. There it is. Oh god, oh god, more stealth guys. We already know that they are a brilliant AJ repellent, so definitely. You don't want to get them out of my lives. Oh, they're close. Okay, uh, grenades. Uh, don't let me down. Come on, charge up. Oh, boom! Oh. Oh man. Um, oh yeah, I should probably talk about the uh, the fireball grenades. <laughs> but just so you know, there's more fallen and hive on the way. As I waste it. Um, so basically, uh, fireball grenades. You sacrifice a lot. Like they don't deal quite as much damage as the other grenades I've been using. Oh god, please don't die. Oh god. Oh god. No no. Oh dang it. Oop. 
Anyway, as I was saying, um, fireball grenades, they sacrifice power for ease of use. Basically, uh, anything that I think is like an 8 meter circle. Oh, d oh no! Dang it, we all died. Okay, as I was- oh, what the- oh, what, what the- oh! As I was saying, anything with an 8 meter, uh, radius, uh, three enemies will get hit, won't deal as- No! Oh, hey. Hey, I leveled up. Go me! Um, okay, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll get it later. I'll get it later. I think? I'll work faster. Okay, I just want to say something. Um, the song that's playing is definitely one of my absolute favorites in the game. Um, and I know I keep saying that about a lot of songs, but I truly mean it. I think this is seriously one of the best songs in the game. It's called End of the Line, um, and it truly, this is the song that makes me look forward to the strike. So without further ado, uh, for a little bit, for a good while, please allow me to shut up so I can play better and enjoy. Seriously, guys, um, this track is one of the longest in the game in terms of, like, everything you have to do. But seriously, every time I end up playing it, like, I don't know, I just really look forward to, um, to it. Because, uh, not only is there one awesome song, uh, this one, but there's actually another really awesome theme, uh, towards the end of the strike. So I just, oh, I'm so excited to just play it for you. Also, uh, oh god, uh, guys, guys. Hey, God, I think, uh, I think Mr. Chronic there just kind of saved my butt. Thank you, sir. You are the best 487 of them all. I'm just saying, man. I'm just saying. But, yeah. Uh, I kind of had to cut, like, seven minutes out because we kept dying. So, again, Chronic, uh, other guy, because I can't remember your name without looking at your tag. Um, did you watch these? I, I am so sorry. I, I am playing like a new man. My sincerest apple jeans, boots with the fur, the whole club was looking quite at her and also me. Mostly me, actually, because I do have quite the booty. You know what I'm saying? That didn't rhyme at all. I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. What is my life? <sighs> ah, God, okay. You know, after after playing with the Sun Singer for a while, though, I just, I'm really, really starting to grow to love it. Like, I just, I don't know, I love being able to spam my grenades and stuff. We can move now. Oh! We did it, yeah, okay. Once you defeat that uh, that Baron that has the yellow health, that means you are officially ready to move on to the next stage of the strike. And unfortunately, this next part 
doesn't have awesomely uh, possum music, but uh, th I guess it does make up for that with a pretty neat battle, so eh, there's that. I will say, again, even though it's one of the longest uh, strikes in the game, it's definitely one of the most unique, uh, just in the sense of like the enemies that you fight within it, so I don't know, I I just really like this strike. I might make a like a, a list, like an official video that like lists my strikes from like least to favorite. I think that'd be pretty interesting. Uh, but of course, I have to play through all of them first, so you guys don't get spoiled on it. Alright, so yeah. Uh, ooh, Song of Flame. Alright, so whenever I stand by my by my peeps, by my chronics, and my other guy, because I can't remember his name, and I'm so sorry, dude. Why can I? What is his name? Hold on. Let's, okay, let's take, let's take care of Mr. Captain. Mr. Captain Crunch. By Crunch, uh, I mean, that's the sound of his bones as I did eat them. Uh, Greg, Mr. Mr. Greg, more like it. Okay, oh, okay, okay. I I got it. I got your name now, Mr. Wait, I can't. I can't really read it. Oh well, <laughs> I'll see it eventually. The layer is up ahead, under that colony ship, just on the other side of all those devils. Oh, good. All those devils. Of course, when he says devils, he doesn't mean like he's not like calling them devils. Like all oh, those darn devils. He, um, that's like like that is the name of the house of devils. Like one of the fallen factions on Earth. So you know you're uh, fighting a fallen that belongs to the house of devils if they have that like white, red, kind of like rustic color scheme to them. So just, just slash to clarify um again uh story wise what we're doing we're like invading their headquarters if that makes any sense so um it's the uh devil's lair strike the literal like house of the devil's strike so yeah just slash to clarify so uh the spot i'm in right now uh definitely the safest spot to stand in um the enemies can shoot at you but their aim is pretty terrible and uh, none of them will actually like rush up to melee you um, you can also avoid all of the spider tanks, uh, attacks really, really dang easily. So that's pretty good. Uh, biggest thing though is that you definitely want to use sniper rifles and, uh, scout rifles if you have them. And again, I am, uh, just kind of using my hand cannon right now. So, hand cannons have terrible range, so they're not really the best weapon of choice. So, after a little bit, I definitely will be showing off, uh, the other two spots that you can stand in. Um, and of course, I'm going to be showing these, uh, three spots, but there are definitely way- Oh, oh excuse me. Oh my god, that was like four burps in a row. My lord. But anyway, yeah, there's definitely more spots than the ones I'm showing, uh, but I'm just kind of showing the most uh, commonly used ones. Oh god, he just got blown away, man. Holy mama. But yeah, okay, so this spot I'm in now, uh, the one that all three of us are actually at, probably the most popular of the three spots. Um, in terms of safety, I'd probably rank it like middle. Um, it's really easy to avoid the spider tanks fire, but once in a while enemies will spawn uh, like right around the corner. So uh, it definitely can be kind of dangerous. So I'll go ahead, uh, let them have that spot. Um, I am not going to risk spawning in Mr. Chronic over there because, or was it Chronic or real? Not, not totally sure on that one, but not going to risk it because I would totally get blown. Ooh, there's a captain. There's captain. Uh, who's, wait, wait, wait. Who's, oh God, who's shooting me on the right? Oh, there's another captain. I'm being Captain Crunch Sandwich. Ooh, you. Actually, that sounds kind of gross. In all in all context, Captain Crunch Sandwich, you grody. Okay, so yeah, uh, that third spot I was briefly at is the third spot, and that one is my personal favorite. But uh, biggest thing before you go to that spot, you definitely want to take care of all the enemies. Um, it definitely has the biggest risk of you dying because uh, tons of enemies will spawn in there. Um, not only do you have to deal with like the Gregs and the Randalls, but you also have to, have to deal with captains that will occasionally spawn. Oh, I totally thought I was going to get a missile to the face. Um, but to compensate for that, you I think that's the spot that you get the uh, closest uh, chance at like shooting the tank out. So if you're using a weapon like mine, uh, the hand cannon, uh, definitely very, very useful. And also I think just more fun in general. Again, like... I feel like the, the safer your spot is, um, the longer it takes to do the fight, and just the less fun it is, because there's less danger, there's less blood pounding adrenaline going through your veins. Also, uh, Randall, why why are you sniping, man? Why, why you gotta be so mean? Because I'll be, I'll be living in a big old city, 
all you're ever gonna be is mean. You know, I just, I'm just, I just say it like I preach it. Also, okay, going into the actual boss rats, because I've pretty much neglected all of that. As you can see there, his core is exposed. Uh, when his core is exposed, I uh, can't really do much, but what you're supposed to do, there's like a glowy red thing that's like underneath the helmet, which does a, like when you shoot at it, um, and actually hit the core, unlike what I was doing, it does a ton of damage. Um, it, you could say it's like, it's like his ultimate weak point, but in order to expose it, you have to deal a certain amount of damage to each one of his uh, armored legs. Once you break one off, uh, it'll explode, meaning like signifying that you you know, can see it. Also, I ran out of ammo, <laughs> so I'm just gonna sulk. Um, but yeah, once uh, once it's exposed, your best strategy is to just well on. So as you can see there, um, if you do run out of ammo, uh, you don't have to like worry too much because after like what was that like 15, 20 seconds, uh, your ammo does regenerate and you'll get a healthy dose of all three, or sometimes only primary and secondary. Not sure what the circumstances are for spawning in the heavy ammo, but yeah. Uh, the only exception, there's one uh, modifier on missions that can happen called Juggler, where uh, ammo- OH GOD! Well, <laughs> There's uh, one modifier called Juggler where, um, if you get it, uh, ammo won't drop for the weapon that you use to kill someone with. So if I'm killing people with my hand cannon, I will never get ammo for my hand cannon unless I switch to a different weapon to kill enemies. I'll get ammo for my secondary and my heavy, but not for that primary. And the same goes for the secondary and the heavy. So um, it's an interesting scenario, but if you run like completely out of ammo with that modifier active, you won't regenerate ammo, which is pretty poopy. But admittedly, pretty... I feel like that's kind of how the game should just be in general. But then again, I mean, if you didn't have any ammo, you'd kind of be like at a standstill. So I I understand the regenerating ammo, but I feel like... I don't know. It's one of my gripes of the game. I feel like there could have been possibly like a better solution to it. But like, I feel bad saying that because then, you know, because I can't really back that up because I really don't know what that solution would be. So, you know, let's just hang over here with my man, uh, Mr. Green Dot Guy. Oh, hey, and I'm closer, okay. Yeah, 192 compared to like 18, crazy. Wow, I only hit it like twice. What a guy, that is me, I'm a guy. <sighs> and not the good kind either. I think I was, was I with Chronic the entire time? Nah, totally sure. Well, that, you know what, he's getting pretty dang low on his health. Um, I think yeah, he still has like two or three legs left. I see two on that side. I feel like he might only have one on the other side, but not nah, completely sure on that. So let's just get rid of these skanks. They ain't no shanks, they skanks. Yo. Okay. Oh god. No! Why am I so bad? <laughs> Dude. I mean, it doesn't help that it takes me like three seconds to reload. Like I, I, I'm pretty much, I'm pretty sure I've spent like half my time just watching myself reload the gun and not actually shoot it. So that's always fun. Uh, but hey, uh, while we're still finding the walker, uh, why don't we go into some of the attacks? Uh, obviously, guys have noticed a few of them, but he, uh, he's probably his most deadly one. Uh, when you see, when you see the uh, laser pointer, he will shoot a giant missile at your face, which is admittedly pretty easy to avoid. But if you're not paying attention, uh, will insta kill you no matter like what level you are. So, it's pretty deadly. In addition, uh, that little, like, glowy blue Gatling gun thing that he has, um, that can also be pretty deadly. Uh, it fires a very quick barrage of shots at you. Uh, if he gets enough in, it will definitely be the end of you. So that's number fun. He has a front-mounted Gatling gun, which, if you are, like, strafing and jumping, um, has a pretty low chance of hitting you. Oh, oh, god. Oh, wait, no, 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 no! Oh, that probably did not that, that was probably not the best sensation in the world i'm just gonna i'm a just hazard guesser but yeah um and if you get too close to him he'll kind of like emit this like giant shockwave and kind of like essentially like throw you away from him uh just to make sure that people don't get like too close and personal with him uh and, pre and that's pretty much to avoid people uh like standing right behind him where he can't hit you with the other guns guys they're Look, there is so much MLG happening here. I, um... Oh, I... Oh. 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 Bye, Spider Tank! Yay, we did it. <laughs> no thanks to me. I was pretty much the opposite of MVP. 
But yeah, the, uh, the last deck he has, uh, he shoots out a bunch of like bouncy electric balls, which admittedly I don't really understand why, but eh, it's something he does. So with that, we finally beat the spider tank. Whew, man, that took a while. And with that, we're finally in the official lair of the House O Devils. Pretty dang exciting stuff. So this is the Devil's Lair. Dude, yeah. Alright, so uh, that giant uh, servitor in the middle is none other than Sepix Prime, the main honcho of the uh, House of Devils. Now, in order to start the boss fight, we do have to take out all of these enemies uh, that surround him. And it's weird because it's, it's almost like he's like draining their souls or something. It, it's so weird. Like, I, I've always wondered what he was doing. But, with that, what do you guys say we listen to that other piece of amazing music I was hitting at earlier? This is Sepix Prime. So yeah, he, um, I don't like the song quite as much as I like End of the Line, um, again, which is the song that we uh, listened to earlier this episode, but I will say, Sepix Prime is, I think, he's one of, if not the only boss in the game that has his own unique theme. So in terms of, like, the music that plays during the boss battles, his is definitely my favorite. Like, it's just, it's so catchy, and I love that one part, like, where the, all the French horns just rip out the, well, and the trumpets too, rip out that. Like, ah, uh, just, ooh, gives me chills, man. I just, ah. Uh. <sighs> Michael Salvatore, Paul Johnson, Paul McCartney, and Marty O'Donnell, you four gentlemen are just the bomb diggity. I'm just saying. So, Subix Prime, uh, Giant Servitor, he pretty much fights exactly like one. Uh, biggest difference being, obviously, he uh, has the, he's got the power to uh, spawn in a ton of cronies. And uh, he also has like a short range melee attack if you get too close to him. So, uh, biggest thing, I like to just kind of hang out around here because uh, there's really like never any chance of him like spawning too close to you where he does that like melee attack that you saw Mr. Uh, Mr. Real whatever his face is. Why can I not remember that poor gentleman's username? What is my issue? Real jinx. Anyway, okay, so down here, um, this is probably one of the safer spots to fight the boss. Uh, this one, unlike the uh, other parts of the strike, there's no like definitive like best spot to hang out in. But I found that this one, um, even though enemies will uh, fight you, I feel like you just have more cover in general from Sepix Prime himself. So if there um, is like a modifier that does more void damage, um, you can usually be rest assured that uh, you don't have to worry as much about his blasts. Because man, if you think that like a normal servitor hits like a tank. 
he friggin' hits like a, for, he hits like that bus from that movie with Keanu Reeves and Sandra Bullock. I'm just saying. So you're not just getting hit in the face with a bus, you are getting hit in the face with a bus and a bomb. So that room I was into, um, it's another pretty decent spot. Um, you can snipe enemies through that window. Um, and if you duck, it does provide pretty good cover from enemy fire. So, yeah. Uh, again, I could hang out in those spots, but that's, that's no fun. I'm just gonna play it how I think it was intended to be played. Um, also, usually what I do, um, I, more or less I use a sniper rifle through most of the strike. Um, and I'll use my primary when he's in these like mid-range spots, and then when he teleports away, kind of like where that ship was, then I'll whip out the sniper rifle and uh, put uh, some rounds in, because usually the weapons I use uh, never really have that great range. So, that's usually my system. Uh, but, you know, everyone has a different system, so bada boom, bada bing, I think he's, I think he's almost done. Hey, just, yeah, a couple more shots. Yeah, let's, uh, let's snipe him. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, that, that sounds just so satisfying. Well done. Sepik's Prime cast a great shadow over our city. With its destruction, the fallen devils will grow weaker. But we must stay vigilant. The fallen are crafty, and they'll find ways to survive. They always do. True words were never spoken. I mean, have never been spoken. Anyway, the last and final golden chest is down yonder. And with that, if you get all five golden chests on Earth, and that chest is your final one, you'll get a uh, uncommon sparrow. Pretty dang possum. Bye, guys! I said it twice, and I'll say it one last time. Again, if you guys see this video, thank you all so much. Thank you for putting up with me and my horrible... <gasps> I got the most kills! Suck it! I mean, <clears throat> thank you guys so much for playing with me and uh, reviving me countless times. I greatly appreciate it. Also, I got the most kills. What you got, son? <laughs> okay, uh, me being a butt aside. Yeah, we got all kinds of booty. Ooh, Chroma Val. Ooh, double defense and like more than double strength. Pfft. Heck yeah, man. I'll take that. Ooh, and I like I like the color better. It doesn't go great with my yellow pants, but hopefully we'll find a replacement for those pretty soon. Oh no, you know I'm not super. Oh my god, thank you. Okay, level five hand cannon. Oh my god. Okay, that that hand cannon was redonkinoculus, and not in the good way, in the pretty poopy way, actually. <laughs> oh man. So thank you all so much for watching. Um, we are officially done with everything on earth oh hey we finally got a fusion rifle pretty exciting stuff actually so um oh wow yeah okay so 90 durability and much more speed also we can finally use like a hard break on our uh, on our sparrow man just we're getting so much good booty today i there's so much approval so little time but anyway that is gonna be it for the day thank you all so much for watching me play and in the next episode, we are going to be tackling the first story mission on the moon. Let's see. Um, no, not Earth. Hold on. What's it called? Let's see. Moon. It's like the dark beyond. Hey, it is. All right. In the next episode, we're going to be doing the dark beyond. Until then, I'll see you next time.